Hello everyone, and welcome back to this video tutorial. And now for part two, I'm going to show you how to um, how to light this particular this um, particular scene using a technique called image-based lighting. Now, if you wonder what that is, a lot of today's modern hardware, like like a lot of today's modern hardware, like graphics cards, support a lot of um, high HDR lighting, which basically emulates how our eyes see the environment. You know, basically, like, let's say you walk to a movie theater, and you you notice that the lighting is different. You know, your eyes go from your eyes adjust automatically to the lighting to the outside from sitting in that dark room for so long. So for now, I'm gonna show you how to actually light up this particular scene. To do that, it requires a couple steps to do it, and it, it also it also refers back to your custom XML file, which I go to now. Now, if you look here. Options are back to the defaults, but now, with that now, I'm going to change a few things here to allow you to use the image-based lighting. To do this, I'm going to show you step by step everything I did. The first thing we're going to change is we're going to change skylight. We're going to change the skylight from this to IBL, and that stands for image-based lighting. Now you must write it in capitals. As I mentioned in the previous previous video, all these tags are case sensitive, as far as I know. So in this case, just type in IBL, just like it is. Now, now that you have IBL, if I hit save and render and render to beast, see, there's a bug. Something went wrong. Basically, there's something wrong. This this is not a bug. What happened was when you change the flag to IBL. Beast is now looking for that file now. He's looking for image-based file. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the map they're going to be using for this. Now, the IBLs, what's, what's needed for IBLs is you need to create the texture in a lat long format. Now, think of it as a, as a like, you're kind of like this, you know, like think of the world map you had in high school. This is the kind of map you're going to create when you create your texture for the sky. This, this is this is this is very important. You, you're going to need this when Beast renders the file. So, and we also need to reference this. And since it's a 32-bit floating point, this is a 32-bit floating point. You need to you need to make, tell Beast to locate this file. And also, by the way, to create this file, I created this in View, which is a, which is a program used for um. For specially designed, for specially designing environments for like films and film extensions. So to do this, I have to create a special. I have to export the sky from view into this lat long format. If you do to do this on other 3D apps, I think you have to set up to be panoramic, so that so that each end so that end to end the whole sky is rendered. Now the title's texture is a 4K by 2K, which is a little big for, for this experiment, but it's worth using. So let's return to the XML file. And to fix this and to fix the bug, and by the way, it is not a bug. What happened is Beast is looking for a tag, a certain tag name, to find a file. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this right here. And we're gonna type in IBL image file and close tag. If you hit enter. Just like in Dreamweaver, you get this. And now this is the tag you're going to use for image files, image-based files. And we we also have to trace where the file is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and um, find the file here. It's in my. It, it'll be it'll probably somewhere on the hard drive, which is fine. And you want to be sure to copy the entire path. It paste it here. Then, and then of course you want to make sure that we have the name for it. So that means you want to um, put forward slash. So in this case, it's going to be forward slash. And I shouldn't have um, spaces in my file. So in fact, let me actually open up in another um, beast file and see how I have it written. Basically, as far as I understand, you you you, you want to try to avoid. Um, Having spaces in the file name, so let's look for that file real quick. 
minus j. And basically, I have here with spaces in it. And you don't want you, you don't want spaces in your file name. So we're gonna we're gonna work we're gonna go we're gonna go back and rename this and close the file in Photoshop first before we rename it. So let's go back and rename this file and make sure that we delete the spaces out of it. Apparently, I've noticed I've noticed in when I use my I use um, Dreamweaver, it is best not to have spaces in the name. So you want the space to be this. Hit rename and copy the entire file name. Then when we return to one of the XML file. You want to go ahead and paste the name here. So it's called Atlantis Day HDR HDR, and Unity will automatically update this for you in, in your um, in your project panel. And you'll find it in your project settings in your project folder, depending on the location of everything. Yep, and it automatically updated it for me. So now we have it ready. I'm gonna go ahead now and set the jam intensity to one. And if everything's done correctly. The scene should render with the HDR map attached to it. So hit big scene. Now, of course, it's a big file, so it's going to take a while to render everything. But this works. You're now using the HDR file to light the scene. And there you have it. You you have you now you officially used the HDR file to light your scene. Now, if I added interest, I'm, I'm going to turn the main light back on. Okay. And basically, what you now notice is how you're using the HDR map to light the entire scene. Isn't that great? Now, and of course, let's go back now, and we'll start, we're playing around a few more options. I'm going to turn on the path tracer, just to, just to see the effects of it. Okay? And I'm going to set the eyeball intensity to 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and bake it again. And now, and now I make the scene. You not you should now you should now see a bit more detail in your lighting. And of course, it'll take longer too. So it's going to be a while to beat the scene. In a bigger scene, it'll take about ten minutes, maybe longer. And there you have it. This is your scene lit with an HDR with an HDR map. And also too, it's very important to make sure that when you light your scene up, that you reference the that you write the entire path of the file. So I'll do, it, I'll do it once more, and this is very, and this, and this is this is very important. This is very very important. Now, I'll also I'll also go ahead, and I'll, I'll also go ahead and change and, ch and, ch and change a few things here as well. I'm also I'm also going to go ahead and set it to zero, set it to zero again, just to, just to, just to illustrate my point. So a big scene. I'll make the scene real quick. And it should actually, yeah. I, I now encountered a bug. We hit, we bake the scene. What happens is beast will, beast won't beast won't bake anything because there's nothing there to bake. So basically, all the options in the previous tutorial are all valid. So if I set this to one, I set the one again, and we'll make sure everything works. Big scene. And of course, on, on a bigger scene, it will take much longer. But, no, but notice how the image-based lighting is a lot more realistic this time. Every, all, 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 the, all, the, all, the, all the sky, everything's been pretty much integrated into the scene. Now, on my character model, I'm going to change a few things. My texture, I'm going to change this. Just, just to show you how cool this looks. Except black. It's already white there, so I'm going to go ahead and change the reflections on the character. And just to illustrate my point, I'm also, I'm also going to... You also see the um, the color of the reflection of the character. Of course, there's no sky, so it's going to reflect blue. So let's turn the reflections off in the sky. Normally, of course, when you um when you do your reflection mapping, you will basically you will basically set your model to um to um, to reflect the environment. So that was a quick rundown on how to set your um your um B settings file to render. In the um, in your face sliding format, so I think if you're watching this video tutorial on on B sliding, in fact the series, as a matter of fact, and if you have any questions, uh, my email will, my email address will be in the um, in the description bar. Feel free to ask me any questions you may have about B sliding, and I will see you again soon with another series. Thank you for watching.